Hey, what's up turtles? It's Crick here with Black Owl Outdoors. And today I'm going to be doing a review on this 511 Tactical Rush 72 internal frame backpack. The MSRP on this pack is $179.99. You can definitely find it a little bit cheaper on other websites. The bag's constructed out of 1000D uh, nylon. This is the sandstone color option, sort of a two-tone color option. The webbing a little bit different color than the main um, material of the bag. <clears throat> this is built as a three-day bag, 72 hours. That's what the 72 comes in uh, as the, the name of the pack. And the volume of this is about 47 and a half liters of internal pack volume. Getting into the features of the bag, on this side and here, they're the same, the same um, configuration on each side. You have those very large uh, zippered pockets, generous zipper, zippered pockets that has webbing running up the whole length of it. And these can definitely double as a water bottle uh, pocket. I have a 40 ounce clean canteen sitting in there right now. A few food bars. And inside each pocket, there's two small, um, there's a kerchief down there, a bit more cordage. There's two small stuff pockets. One here my hand's going into and another one up here. So it's nice that there's two, again, two small compartments in here. And this is on each side. I really like the fact that these, um, these pockets are in there. Moving to the top of the bag, on, e on a, uh, each side of the grab handle, which is um, two pieces of nylon, these are the ports for the tube of your hydration bladder or reservoir. So meaning you can bring it out either side, depending if you want it on your left or right shoulder coming over the shoulder strap. And I'll show these again once I get into the reservoir pocket. The zippers track I just opened up here is a fleece lined pocket, great for cell phone, sunglasses, anything you don't want scratched in there, I just have my cell phone right now. It's basically the top of the bag. Forgot to mention on the side here, there are two uh, compression straps, one running right here. That comes over, let me open it up a little bit. So you can secure what's inside here and another one up here. And again, there's both of these on each side of the bag. The bottom of the bag, we have two drain holes here and four pieces of nylon sewn here so that if you do want to attach something to the bottom of the bag, sleeping bag, um, tent, ground tarp, you know, you, use your imagination that you have four points of anchor here that you can um, configure a system to attach something to the bottom of the bag. The back of the pack, start with these shoulder straps. Now this is the yoke. They're calling this the yoke design, if you will. And you can see how this is um, sewn at this length back here, the shoulder straps. Very wide. This was in addition to the pack, the changes they made, 511 made, making these wider and a little bit thicker. Almost a half inch, I would guess, just by looking at it right now. Underside, just a little bit of this I'm not even sure the material of it. Adjustable sternum strap here with, this is adjustable, these are C-clips. I'll take one side off just to show you. C-clip here. So you can move it up and down on these, this webbing at the height you need it on your body. Moving down the shoulder strap, we have two buckles on each side, quick release buckles. So if you do need to drop your pack, whenever a scenario presents itself, you can. Undo these and the hip belt, obviously, to drop your pack really quick. And there's a little bit of this nylon, or bungee, I should say, just to keep this tag end um, free from flopping around when you got it at the cinched where you want, want the straps. The hip belt here has some webbing on it. It's definitely thinner than the shoulder straps. I'll touch on that towards the end. One and a half inch nylon. One and a half inch buckle as well. Moving to the back panel, you have these four zones of contact with the back. You're gonna get a little bit of airflow. This, these are raised off, these zones are raised, not so much down here, but up here there's a little bit of channeling, which will potentially help a little bit of airflow. You have this rubberized material down here that my hands are touching on to help keep the pack in place when it's making contact with your back because this is pretty, um, smooth and can move around so it's a nice little extra feature to help keep the pack in place 
underneath these two zones here I was just touching on, you can stow the hip belt. Like such. For whatever reason, you don't want this out, you don't need it. Traveling with it, trying to pack it somewhere to save room space, you can tuck this under there and get these out of the way. Now this back panel also opens up into the pocket for your bladder, water bladder. Got a hoop here hanging, and if you want to thread through here, I'll try to show this, coming through the port, get my finger to come through there, just to show a little bit of a stretch. Where are you? Where are you? There's my finger. coming through. It's a little bit of a reach with my hand because this does open up pretty far as you can see, but with the tube it's not that big a deal. This is where the frame is. I mentioned before this is an eternal frame pack. And I'm going to get this hook and loop open. There is an aluminum stain here in addition with this uh, molded piece of plastic and there's inside here is a stays. And this is removable for whatever reason you don't like it, you want to take this out, you can. Right here is the aluminum stay. Moving on to the front of the pack, these two top compression straps that are held sort of in place or in line with these seat, clamp, uh, seat um, rings is this sort of marsupial pocket, if you will, that I just have a water filter hanging in right now. And this can be opened up to accommodate for a larger item if you need to carry a helmet for whatever reason. This opens up pretty nice. You see the profile. And you have these two mesh on each side to help keep uh, contents in place while they're in this pocket. Great to stuff. Every time I see this pocket like this, my instant my mind goes off. It's like that'd be great to put a layer if it, you know you're hiking and you're constantly you know changing layers. The weather's changing on you pretty fast. You don't got to get inside or a wet layer that you don't want on the inside of the bag. These outside pockets are really great for that. This is the large main uh, admin pocket if you will. Bunch of webbing running up here, a place for a patch. I don't have too much inside here right now, but I do have a pair of binoculars floating around. Right in the rain notebook, all weather notebook. In here I got a headlamp and ferro rod. Or see him ride. You saw this big stuff pocket. My notebook came out of in the front of that. You got a couple extra pockets, a small stuff pocket here. Some pen organization right here. A bigger pocket again. And on the opposing side, let me show you, get the angle for you. These are actually two big pockets right here. Stick my hand, as you can see, running the running the length of this, the one on each side, and then you have this little bit of a, again, mesh pocket. I just have a sharpie laying in there right now. This isn't a bad admin pocket, bad design. I've definitely had, uh, I've seen other packs that I've reviewed, and uh, personally seen that I like a little bit better than this, but nonetheless, it's not bad. On top of that, smaller zipper pocket. Just the I got my compass right in here, and. On the opposing side on the flap right here, I got Victoria Knox Angler. It's nice that there's another little small pocket in addition to the admin pocket on the outside. And that's basically the outside of the bag. Moving into the main compartment, I'm gonna unbuckle this, give myself a little bit of room. One here because it does clamshell open completely, which is I really like. opens up the whole way. Like I said, really nice feature. What's great about this clamshell design for packs is that you can get completely inside of it and rearrange everything you want. You can get into it, you can see it. And just really, it's really nice for traveling purposes. If you do, are gonna use a pack like this, you can really get in and travel it. So I just have my rain shell, whole hammock sleeping system in here, tarp, hammock, straps, uh, bug net, wool blanket. On the flap right here, we got three different pockets. 
three different zippered pockets. Inside this one does have a couple food bars, maybe one in there and a piece of garbage. A larger sized pocket again, just have a piece, of, two pieces of some paracord in there for now. And another pocket down here, which I have nothing in. I'll take this out because there are pockets underneath this. Zipper mesh pocket right here. Generously sized. Don't have anything in there right now. And down here we have another pocket that's completely kind of free of the bag. As you can see I'm rolling up one itself. It has some shot cord and a cord lock right here. So again, keeping in line with all these tactical style bags. A lot of pockets, a lot of organizational capabilities. I'm going to get the pack on and talk about the fit and some of my impressions of the bag. Inside this bag right now, I not inside, total weight, uh, including the weight of the bag, which I don't have, was not listed on 5.11 site. This is probably about 22, 23 pounds on me right now. Start like to get the hip belt where I want it. Next, move to my shoulder straps. And lastly, the sternum strap. One thing I really don't particularly like on this pack is that if you heard when I was getting this hip belt cinched, it's not really that smooth of, smooth of an action. You hear that pull right there? One thing I really like on bags that are going to be a little bit bigger and about this size, carry extra weight, is the design on the hip belt that you have another attachment point right here. So the nylon would be held right here. And then to cinch it, I pull, I would pull like this, pull the, into here and it just helps get the weight. It's easier to do. And it's more natural than me kind of pulling across my body. It's a smoother action. And that's what I see on, on backpacking bags and stuff like that. <clears throat> like I said earlier, I touched on that. They made some improvements to the shoulder straps because they figured, or they learned that fellows people in the field were carrying heavier weight heavier weight in the bag so they beefed up this up here and I feel like they they neglected the, um, the hip belt they beefed these up they changed these seams there as the seam was right here initially and they put it on the outside now and they beefed this up to accommodate for the extra weight that people were carrying in the field but with, I think they should have put a little bit of attention down to the hip belt as well with this system that you just saw me putting on and I didn't like it, it's not as smooth. Like I said, in contrast, this hip belt was pretty thin compared to the straps. Now this is effective, this works, the weight is, the weight is carried and held here. Um, and I understand there's always things to consider when you're designing a pack and making improvements, you know, production calls first, what that's gonna to translate to the consumer and all that. And you can't just do every, everything you want because then packs can get crazy expensive, which they do. You can buy a pack this size for 600 bucks, but nonetheless, um, it's still comfortable Another thing I want to touch on, if you've seen any of my other videos, I'm really big on comfort of a pack. And because this yoke style shoulder strap is sort of fixed, you can see it's already, it's coming from the same point. There's no really, there's not too much movement in here for this to accommodate larger sizes, different shaped bodies, shoulders around the neck. So I put this on, I did hike this maybe about five miles. That's all I put on at one time with this. And I could feel a little bit of pressure right here on my neck. Now it didn't cause a hot spot, like I said, only for five miles. I don't know what that's gonna look like or what it's gonna feel like, you know, 10, 15, 20 miles with wearing this pack. I won't know until I have the time to carry it for that long. But nonetheless, all in all, this, this comfort is not bad on this pack. It's not bad on this pack at all. And I really like this size pack. I really like this size pack because I've been using a, a Kelty Red Wing for some years and this sort of 47, 50 liter volume three-day bag is really great because it can be used as an overnight bag multiple nights depending on your style and comfort 
It also be used, it's not too big as a day pack. It can be used as a day pack if you're trying to go heavy, gear heavy for a single day. If it's winter, you're carrying a lot of extra gear. This 47 and a half liter three day pack really can work well as a day pack. <clears throat> I really, I'm not a super fan of the admin pocket. It's okay. Um, but one thing I really was surprised and I liked about when I saw this was this small pocket here and then this other small pocket up top here. Right inside the main compartment you have another small pocket easily accessible. Without, I don't have to get into the main compartment. Yes, I have to open it as opposed to if it was on the outside of the bag. But nonetheless, it's another small pocket that's very easily accessible <clears throat> in addition to here in this pocket. And I just really like, really like these, um, these side pockets in here. And this is going to be considered, <laughs> for this video, this is my knife pocket. And you'll see why once I open that up. Condor bush lure, video coming on that. SE4, I've done a video on that. Mini bushler, video to come on that. And one more, classic one. My knife pocket, a little knife heavy today. I'm gonna be trying out these Condor knives, giving them a little workout before I do a video on them. So all in all, this is a really cool pack. I really like it. Um, a few things I changed, it is comfortable. I wouldn't not recommend it because of the comfort, but this is something, like all packs, you gotta buy it, you gotta try it, weigh it. Put it on with weight see how it fits your body cool design i hope i you know went through all the specs in detail if you have any questions something i didn't cover any opinion you want to add please leave a comment this is crick signing out with black outdoors later turtles